Hello, my name's Lars Bruner and I'm speaking to you this morning from a rather brisk, rather cold west coast beach near Oban on the west coast of Scotland. I'm here next to SAMS, the Scottish Association for Marine Science. We're a partner in a new EU Integrate project, which is looking at integrated multi-trophic aquaculture and we're working with partners from Spain, Portugal, France and Ireland in this three-year project. IMTA stands for Integrated Multi-Trophic Aquaculture and all that really means is growing lots of different species close to each other so that you allow the exchange of nutrients between those various different organisms. What traditionally happens in thin fish aquaculture, the example that we have of the salmon farm we have out there, is that the, the salmon are grown in a monoculture on their own. So the feed comes in, it's fed to the fish, and those fish and that feed releases waste products into the environment. And that's just lost now in aquaculture, one of the biggest costs is the feed. It's about 50 or 60% of the cost of production. And so a large component of that feed is being lost to the environment, either directly from falling out at the bottom of the cages or through uh, the excretion of the fish. So what the idea behind IMTA is, is to capture those lost nutrients, those really valuable and expensive nutrients, and turn them into other products. And they do this by growing things like seaweed or shellfish, which can utilize either the dissolved waste or the particulate waste and turning it into another valuable product. So you've got there a win-win situation, if you like. You are reducing the environmental impact and you are creating additional value for the farmer. We've come in from a slightly chilly back beach into part of the Sam's Aquarium here. This is just to show you some of the species that we've used in Sam's in the past. Sam's has been involved in aquaculture for a long time and in IMTA for last 10-15 years in different ways. SAMS has always been interested in co-culture of species and the spe some of the species that we use here on the west coast of Scotland are sea urchins like you can see here and also seaweed. You see a piece of sugar kelp here that we can also cultivate. We have a seaweed farm not far from SAMS here that we own and run ourselves. The importance of the species that we use are that they are local to the city area on the west coast of Scotland and that they have a commercial viability. These species have proven themselves in the past. The experience that we have with cultivation and IMTA will contribute towards the success of the Integrate project. We started looking at IMTA in Scotland at the beginning of 2000s, basically, and we, we did a lot of scientific work on it and proved that as a concept it would work. But there was very little uptake by the industry and we wanted to understand why that was. So we created a project, a European project led by SAMS, but with 14 other partners around Europe looking into why IMTA wasn't more widely adopted. That project still exists and that IMTA system still exists, but there's still been relatively little uptake by the rest of the industry. And really what this Integrate project wants to do is to expand the uptake of IMTA across Europe by really demonstrating the benefits, talking to policy makers about the advantages of IMTA and talking to society about how they want their food to be produced from the sea in the future. What the industry struggles with is finding places that they can farm their fish. There's a relatively poor acceptance of fish farming in the marine environment. This is something which has been recognised by the Scottish Parliament. And one of the, the solutions that they, that they highlighted as a way forward for the industry was the idea of integrated aquaculture, IMTA, as a way of building social acceptance. What do you think is, is the potential for this? I mean, if we, if we accelerate to 2030 and the, the industry's anticipated growth, I mean, where do you see multi-trophic aquaculture sitting within that? You really need to go back to the question of what you're trying to achieve by, by implementing this multi-trophic system. So if you are trying to balance out nutrient uh, budgets over the scale of the farm, it's, it's really quite difficult to, to do because uh, the, the sp there's a spatial mismatch between uh, the amount of space it takes to produce 1,000 tonnes of salmon and the amount of space it takes to produce 1,000 tonnes of mussels. If you were to start thinking about this at an ecosystem level where you were trying to balance the nutrient inputs from aquaculture and the nutrient reductions from things like mussel farming or seaweed farming, then you may get a more viable model, a model that works better 
uh, when you move away from the farm scale to the ecosystem scale. The benefits of the IMTA or integrated aquaculture may be bigger than just uh, looking at nutrient budgets. The, the, there's uh, a diversification of aquaculture in there. There's development of new business, small businesses, rural economies, social acceptance of aquaculture. So if you're looking at it as a more holistic tool to to look at an ecosystem approach to aquaculture, to balance social need, etc., then I think th there's more value in it. We hope these short films, along with lecture material and other information, will be produced by the Integrate Consortium by our partners across Europe, and it will provide the basis in the future for those who are interested in, an, in IMTA, be they lay public, commercial or academia.